with over five decades of experience. KP has witnessed the mess in the country's urban development. He knows what ails India's urbanization and the challenges of creating a new city. Listen to KP's interview with Business World as he discusses the challenges and the urgent need for a new urbanization policy for the country to match with the projected growth of 5 trillion economy. The Honorable Prime Minister echoed his sentiments in an article published in the Economic Times titled, Well-Planned Cities Will Decide the Fate of India. Great visionaries think alike. Welcome to our BW Business World Dialogue. We featured many personalities, doers, nation builders, institution builders, leaders from every domain in the BW Business World Dialogue. Today we have a visionary personality who's not only built a large enterprise, but it has impacted the country in a big way. He's the father of urbanization in India. And uh, today we would talk to him about what it takes to develop cities in a fast-growing country, how should uh, be the role of private sector in developing cities at a scale, uh, what should be the roadmap for urbanization, and there couldn't have been a better person than Sri K.P. Singh, the chairman of DLF and the pioneer in urbanization in India to be at this BW Dialogue. Welcome, Mr. Singh. Thank yeah. you for joining me Business World in this conversation. First of all, my congratulations to you on winning the Austin Young Entrepreneur of the Year in the Lifetime Achievement category. Uh, I'm sure it feels good. You've won many awards. What does an award at the young age of 93 with all your achievements mean to you? Well, awards like this, frankly, does uh, give you an inspiration and uh, recognition of uh, uh, something which others found it impossible and I try to make it possible. So it is a great satisfaction that at least um, a very uh, very prominent institution like ENY have recognized this and given this honor. So, Absolutely. Mr. K.P. Singh, now you embarked on your journey of building Gurgaon and the DLF city in Gurgaon many decades back. Has your dream been fulfilled? What you had, of course, the dream gets upgraded every now and then. Um, how would you see the development of Gurgaon and the DLF city and the DLF development in Gurgaon with what, with what you started with? Well, like glass half full or half empty, frankly. You ask me, am I fully satisfied? No. No. But am I fully satisfied with what we have done, keeping into view the constraints we have of the town planning regulation? Yes, I'm satisfied. But that is not what the way what Gurgaon was, was envisaged, let me tell you. Gurgaon was envisaged when I started as a somewhat different city which is as good as any best city in the world, particularly at that time, the Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia, I mean Korea, and these people growing, so leave aside what is happening in the Western world, but those are good examples to see the, how the infrastructure is there, how the road system is there. Unfortunately, the, the town planning regulations are so archaic, where archaic, now they have amended, that you could not build what you wanted. For instance, to build a city, you have to be visionary because you don't see how a city is going to come up in 10, 15 years. You'll see how it's going to be 50, 100 years from now. You have to, uh, posterity will judge you. So this I issue, when you look back, the whole planning was wrong. Master planning, no, because test of the master planning is whether the people who make a plan 
are so visionary that they have thought through what will be the aspiration of the newer generations, how India will grow, what kind of living spaces they would acquire in a positive, not negative manner, and therefore, what kind of transportation will they have, what kind of living they would like to, what kind of water supply, what kind of drainage. It's a different ball game. There is a reason why this is not there. You must know the background, why it was not there. And <clears throat> it, the background is this, that during mid-50s, you would kind of remember, that there was a pattern of development decided by the then government. It's called a socialistic pattern of society as a way of living. That's how the Planning Commission came. At that time, in India became just independent. Everything was short supply. So in my view, rightly, they brought a slogan, think small and manage shortages. So every development has to have the think small, manage shortages. That's what you find, that all industrial undertakings had a capacity limitation. You can't make more than 10,000, and you can't make more than um, 5,000. Um, this uh, the restriction on the output because they are too, they are not allowed to make more, otherwise you need more materials. So in every facet of life, they brought around the philosophy of thinking is small, and that time, many shortages through controls, permits and all. Not realizing that this is the biggest fallacy in urbanization, because if you apply the same thing to urbanization, Think small, manage shortages. Exactly what DDA apartments are and what exactly the developments are. They thought the prevailing circumstances at that time, not realizing that as India grows, people will like to live larger spaces. Instead of one apartment having one car and one motorcycle, they will have four cars. This is what is happening. Families will expand. In the same area, land becomes very expensive apartment. So naturally, if one, as they grow up with children, they want everybody a different room. So there was, it was, Brand was a small apartment. It may be all right in a socialistic country, but the, India is democracy. Fundamental mistake they made. Now, having made the mistake, and the other thing was to make the road narrower. Think small, narrow road, smaller apartments. Naturally, water supply, etiquette for them, the whole drainage, everything became a, a, a system of think small and many short. So, if the same principle applies in industry, which was applied, in 90 onwards, when India opened up, that system was thrown away. And then, gradually you find, industries that came thereafter, there are no limit. They can, you can make any capacity. You can be world competitive. And therefore, our, our industrial undertakings today are competitive with the world because they are running the capacities at a scale. Or, as a scale. But, say for example, if that was a mistake earlier to make an effective put machines, a smaller capacity, in industry, it's very easy to set right, change the technology, remove the machine, bring the new machine, or even demolish the building, make another building. But in urbanization, a mistake cannot be set right. Because once you make the road and put apartments, building on the side, then when you want to increase the width of the road, you necessary means that the apartments along the road have to be demolished. Is it humanly possible in India? No, it's not possible. Because the system is such, anybody goes bulldozer, they'll go to court, they'll go to this. So a mistake made in urbanization is very difficult to set right in future. So the good thinking that is, think urbanization, as now they have thought in the industrial policy, the philosophy changed from thinking small, managing shortage, now, to think big and create surpluses, that is the dictum.
of industrial development now in the country. That's why India, telephone, IT, everything in India is booming. But in urbanization, it has to be think big again and create larger spaces, wider roads. That has not yet come in. So in Gurugama, coming back to when we started, I knew, I had a vision that Gurugama, when it grows, that's why I called it a knowledge city and not an industrial city. I said, when it grows, people will come from outside with knowledge means high-tech, upper strata of society. So they will live well, they will create employment, they will be catalysts for more businesses to come, they will give more revenue to the state, and there will be all-round prosperity. But they want to have open spaces, they want to have bigger area, the people call Kosovo. So, but unfortunately, the town planning regulation restricted our vision because whereas I wanted, for example, the normal road, I wanted to be minimum 24 uh, meter width, or sometimes 36. 24, but what is the road? The best road in Gorgama became, at that time, not the, we are not talking what they call the main, but when you get into colony inside, are 12 meters. Now, 12 meter road are designed for, you can have one car, motorcycle. Now, today, in those apartments, in the same, every child has a car, three, four cars. How the hell do you park them? How do you move out? And roads are, are narrower. So the moment you come out, traffic jam, come out, traffic jam. So it is, it is reason is that this myopic thinking in the forward planning of master plans of an area in urbanization is still suffering. So my plan at that time was, in fact, we went to, it, I took a team of few people with me, my people went to Malaysia, South Korea, and it was then the initiative of the then government. They were very proactive. Central government wanted to be proactive. So we saw different things. I was amazed to see that in Malaysia, for example, you go, you, you, we call it a beautiful development road. Roads, the airport was built for so, the next 50, 70 years. So, so it is it's amazing. So wherever you went around. So when I came back, I offered it that let us do the thing. We just started going on, that thing was going on. The first day I realized that how do I connect Metro City to Gurgaon? Because I knew when the density increases, the connectivity is through only this thing. So my plan initially was to 16 lane highway, eight and eight, to be built by us on government land for the government and hand over to the government. Because, and the highway is specifically the same thing as abroad. So I said, we will make that road in lieu of what? Only request was, let us make our own town planning laws. Within Gurgaon, what we are developing, because the area which we are developing required a certain, that unfortunately was controlled by the Haryana government according to their policy at that time. So they naturally, because they say our policy uh, restricts us that we can't allow you more than this width of the road, we can't allow you this, we can't allow you this. So it was quite a battle. So finally we said, oh, now you can't allow for a businessman, it becomes his, you can't change India. You've got to get on with the job, the same town plan regulation. So I got it, regulation modified quite a lot. But the basic upgraded, master planning... Upgraded have, it quite a lot. Yeah, but this basic master planning concept, I could know. What is it? The, so the entire country is suffering for that. Yeah, especially the town master plans are made, you know, 20 years in advance or 25 years in advance, then the implementation takes 5 to 10 years. So effectively you have 10, 12 years and you know, it's already time to upgrade. Hmm. So how do you how do you build master, master plan, plan for 50, see, 70 years? See, master planning is, 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 is when you make, has to be made by visionaries. 
See, Chandigarh development, how many, maybe Chandigarh development must be 60 years back, 60 I saw years. it. So even now when you go, Chandigarh development is even not clocked up inside. Reason is that the, the person, not person, or the committee of people who plan a master plan are not restricted to these myopic visions given from a socialistic pattern of society because they know that India is a democracy. That presupposes people will make more money. That presupposes that you live better. That presupposes they would like better buildings for the children uh, to go to school, good hospitals, everything infrastructure related with you, high class. So that master planning, when you make a document, have to be visionaries in it, not biased people. And unfortunately, the entire master planning done today is by a set of town planner bureaucrats only. Because bureaucrats are very competent people. I've got nothing, I'm very competent. But they're competent in their own profession. They're journalists, they're not specialists. So they've come only for four or five years. Then they're transferred out. So whatever brilliant uh, bureaucrat you may be, his contribution cannot be, unless the guy take a permanent transfer and he's a visionary, there can be some visionary. And then, then you go around, they can be the best. But it doesn't happen, mostly people have a few years. And then for the sake of private participation, they follow a drill, they get an MLA as, as a private partner, or they will get asked for opinion, public objections, which is a facade because whatever public reaction is there, nobody bothers about committee meets or The key thing missing is participation of visionary developers who are not basically selfish about their businesses, not at all. They are only concerned with what the country needs. Now, not now, country needs now, 50 years, 100 years ahead. Now, if you can do this thing, and by the way, let me tell you another thing. India is blessed with one thing, that there is no shortage of land. In other areas, Malaysia, other places, the land is narrower. Here, you can go as much as you want to. It is only shortage of vision. You can expand. You can expand more like when we're going to Gurgama. You can go a little more further. You can go more. But important thing is you have to have vision that to do a proper thing, it must cater for the emerging requirements of the newer generation 50 years, 100 years ahead. That is, it is missing. Absolutely. Now it brings to your crucial input of having large, storied, reputed track record developers to participate in the urbanization story. How can developers like DLF participate in the urbanization story? And how do we make sure that the, at the highest level there is a consciousness of the role of private sector developers in building the new India that this government and the Prime Minister wants to do? No, there is also a history behind this issue. I would not blame anyone. I will say there is very legitimate reason why this is uh, there's a, when you talk about developer, developers have uh, used to have, not now, by the way, used to have a bad name because of one reason, you must understand. See, in 1958, the then government decided to nationalize the business of urban land development. And please understand whole urbanization based on developed land. You can still make a house on undeveloped land. You can make soap pits here and all the kind of unauthorized. But developed land means it has to have a network of drainage system, water, in a planned manner. So in 1958, what the government at that time did, with perhaps noble objectives, but theoretical, not realizing, was at that time they thought, oh, farmer is not being paid well if we allow private sector. So government will pay them good compensation. Number two was 
prices of the houses were too high, rentals were too high. When we government makes it, it'll, prices will come down. Third, plan development will take place because planning will not be distorted. And fourthly, there will be no corruption because it goes exactly 100% percent opposite. Opposite happened. Happen. <laughs> so what happened when democracy? India is democracy. So there's a demand. And this one decision of the government, 58, has screwed the whole, whole of uh, India's urban development. Because then what happened was, another uh, breed we, we call of developer gotten like, when this business decision uh, nationalized happened, DLF opted out. See, those people, like DLF, has never been any business which is not authorized. So, my late father-in-law, who was in the, he said, we, government nationalized kar diya, hum, we can't do anything. Let's get, so we got on to industrial side. But other guys and some new breed of people came, we call them fly-by-night operator. Right? A new breed came, so where they found land, they made the house, where they found, and of course, what happened was that in collision with the town planners, in collision with some bureaucrats and on po political people, all a new thing kept in complete uh, this uh, uh, corruption, completely against the plan. And the quality was not up to it. And you find unauthorized building here, slums here. So one third of India lives today in slums. Has somebody asked, any media has asked, why India even today? One third living, that time much more. Because of this one decision, this one decision, and they, they tainted this developer, very bad name for the genuine developers. Genuine, there were nobody genuine left over. We were out, they closed the shop completely. So when I started in 1980, my first problem was, I remember I talked to somebody, a very high political man, for some help because his whole policy had to be changed. And he was a very nice, very senior executive. He said, we keep him, what are we doing? This problem is that in the days, what was happening was if you buy liquor, it used to be only from superstore, from the government-controlled shops. So normally, you will find when the liquor shops are open, then there's a big line of people standing to buy liquor because all, like, in short supply, you would buy. So, he said, it's like you go in the car, you find a big line. So you ask, hey, what is the line? What happened? This is a drug line. Not to say they are not sharabi, they are going to buy alcohol. So he said, your uh, builder's uh, developer name has become that. Nobody distinguishes which is good, bad. Now today all builders have got a bad name. So that background of bad name emanated from 58. So therefore, media, public, judiciary, and everyone got, uh, got affected to the extent. So when I started in, in 1980, it was an uphill task for me. I said, how do we change? So I had a very, very fine, a um, very great mentor, I will call it to me, was Mr. H.D. Shori. H.D. Shori was a common cause they were, and a very famous person. So I, their job was, all, the thing was that platform, to think of how a common man can be helped and not defrauded. So I talked to him like this. So he suggested, let's go to USAID. So I remember he and myself went to USAID office here to ask, uh, the USAID are very good. They used to help countries in any development process. So we asked the concerned person, he said, no problem, we will bring you a copy of the law, what is done in US. So this RERA law today is based on that US law. In 1980, we got the law, adapted to Indian condition, and then tried to get to the government to please enact this law. But as the events happened, Government changed, we tried, nothing happened, till Mr. Modi came. And since uh, Modi ji is the prime minister with conviction and decision making, so I think in uh, 2016 or 15 something, 
he brought a law called RERA. Now, RERA law is so good that all errant builders, developers, which were hoodwinking, doing wrong thing, they were either in jail or bail or bankrupt. That's why you find today there's a big vacuum. All those bad things have gone, finished. Now, today, because of RERA, those malpractices have stopped. Therefore, a new era of, of developers has started. Absolutely. The DLF, as the, uh, to its credit, has always remained compliant since independence of the country. We started, DLF, by the way, 76 years old, started. Throughout compliance of law, I ensure that it remains compliance. My son is further ensuring compliance. So people like us remain without any problem. But people who are not following law, they have vanished. So from now onwards, that tribe has gone. But what is remaining is a faulty master planning system in the country because urbanization is an end product of master plan. So unless you change the concept of master plan, has anybody asked a question to, uh, uh, to was, why in Delhi there's a traffic mess? Why in Delhi you'll find almost 50% of the houses built by DDA have been on, uh, on the side because additions of room has happened. Naturally, if you add room, there's shorter water supply. Why? Because the thinking at that time was that they made small, small. think small, very short. Think small. Now they are for new. So appeal to the honourable prime minister is because he's a decision maker. He's a like a person. The day the honourable prime minister's mind gets this attention, and this is the reason I can tell you, he's a type of person within short period you will act on it. Yeah, any, any decision that emanates from him, he follows through, so, he takes progress so reports. My purpose of raising at this moment, one thing is I've retired, I've got nothing to, to lose and nothing to gain, okay? Since you are asking me, since this, this reward, uh, award giving to me is a recognition, and therefore, if I don't say, then frankly, I'll be called that I am abdicating my responsibility of not expressing the views, what is wrong and what is right. So hence, what should be done? What should be done by the builders of infrastructure? This is the government which is focusing on building infrastructure. First, this is the government that is focusing on building smart cities. So how do you really bring see, large developers to partner with the government and be a catalyst in the development of new India? See, Private sector is always there to be catalyst. That also, please understand that all emanates from planning. If planning, see, the whole concept is a very big subject because you are not talking, emanates from the center, and since it is a state subject, it goes down to a state, it has to percolate down by reasoning and by understanding, not by direction. So my idea of requesting all to, to have a national debate is let everybody participate, the state participate. It is for the state's good. Whatever the Honorable Prime Minister wants to do in, for India, actually it is, it is for the state to implement, for the good for the state. But some state for the heck of it will oppose. They're not opposing the Prime Minister. They're opposing their own interests of the people living there. Because if, if this is not done properly, the generation to come will suffer like they have been suffering before. So today, the issue simple is change the basic system master planning, number one. Number two, make one thing after rare coming. Urbanization cannot be done by one sector of the economy. This public-private sector partnership is vital. Without that, you cannot do. Even new cities, when I made Gurgaon, I know it was one of the most difficult things to make. No city by land purchased by an entrepreneur 
of couple of thousand. You can buy four, five hundred acres and make a thing, but there's not city. When you buy a city, you are talking thousands of acres. Now, Gurgaon is the only city where the entire piece of land was purchased. Government didn't help. In a heterogeneous family, because general holding was five acres, six acres, and you're talking thousands of acres. Now, feudal families, you take, they may go to buy the next, uh, they will increase the rate because, and if you increase the rate, the first one will not uh, uh, register. So it's impossible because you, it, it, when you have so much heterogeneous. Moving targets. Uh, and heterogeneous because you, and you, you just can't make it. So this is another chapter in life which I did. I studied it very carefully. What will it take me to win their confidence and trust in an honest manner? Government dictation cannot win. Law is there. But the person who is buying the land has to demonstrate that he is indeed looking for the welfare of the family of those who are disabled. For instance, when this happened, I, by nature, I'm very, I go microscopically in detail exactly. So I realized that my biggest problem in life is going to be, how do I buy land from these people? So heterogeneous holding, and every holding, there's a, in, in, we have got a very interesting subject. Where is the law? HUF. No, no. See, HUF is the wrong name. Yes. Law mandates that when the, some landed property is sold or something, the, 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 the money will go equally to the boys and girls. There's no distinction earlier there used to be. But feudal families do not, quite a lot of families, they don't follow that. So they, when you go to them, they say, ah, this law to hai. Hum to ladki ho nahi denge. Now, if you don't give the girl, they will not sign. Your title is defective. So we had to completely set up another organization to deal with the girls are married, deal with the husband and girls completely in a manner. So unko dena, in chosen ko satisfy karna. Then issue was that we, when you buy land, how do you see that they are rehabilitated properly? They're farmers. So, like one acre you buy, you give them 10 acres. So we developed major ag agriculture area near Alwar, Alwar side, by the help of Pusa Institute to mechanize. So the idea was, we ek acre up, they take 10, mechanize the whole thing. Amongst the various things, so, so many things had to be done to become a member. It took me 10, 15 years, three, four times a week. I, was, I used to be with families and all. And I know it is not possible to do. How I did, I was very hungry. I wanted to, I had no money, DLF had zero money. So how the hell do I go about? So I had to win the trust of people, to trust me to buy on credit. With the confidence, just say, "Mujhko paise aayenge, main pehle unko dunga." Agar aapki zameen hoga, aap nahi denge. Nahi, koi nahi deta credit credit ko. Zameen unheard of. So it's unheard of in the world. We did a study that any city has been based upon buying agricultural land from a fragmented feudal family on no promise of future. On promise of future, on credit. Here we did. That's how we started. The question is. Intent, mm -hmm. intent, and track record. So, then you analyze, if you really see, after independence of India, has any city in private sector has come up? Jamshedpur, not this scale. No, there's no industry. We're talking about industry. See, whenever there's a, like for example, those are cities or industrial cities. Yes, no. There's no. I can't think of the scale anywhere. So the, the alternate to that, which is, in my view, the right future for India, because this cannot be done. I did it because I, was, I know how, how I did it. I was hungry and all, but everybody is not like this thing. Now question is, land has to be acquired by the government, then auctioned it out to eligible people, not Tom, Dick and Harry, like Noida is an example, Greater Noida, which in my view is the correct example, government acquires. 
then auctions are sells it on a competitive basis because that way you have no hassle of going around making compact blocks that is the future which means government acquire but government does not develop they can't government thing is government role is that they are enablers and facilitators enable law to acquire then in auction you i'm not not an advocate you a lot to somebody you can't be in in the system there nothing you go to auction but make a category so that tom dick and harry don't come they they, they screw up something parameter after that involve the private sector big way then liberalize your entire norms to meet the requirement of tomorrow not the archaic requirement of yesterday and in that case make a drastic revision of all the thing then private sector will get involved they will develop it cities will be will, will get developed in india without that if government does not acquire no development if government even acquires and they want to develop it is cannot be a success story so it is the joint sector public and private but with one change when public sector starts thinking government at the highest level that this is the most important thing for india making new cities because new cities according to mckenzie report i think you guys should read a very superb report that came out 2014 the best report i've ever seen very thorough report in india and they said india will be a total mess india need to develop one chicago type of city every year imagine the magnitude is is mind boggling is if you grow india will grow So there, will, there will be so much migration of from rural area so much job seekers so many people living that the infrastructure cannot cope up with that so the thinking is create infrastructure urban today for the need of tomorrow and i can tell you very differently um, uh, the prime minister's uh, vision of having 5 trillion uh, growth I'm, i i feel it we will cross this figure also reason because one indians are very bright entrepreneurs if you see like i see i see abroad quite a lot meet people our indian entrepreneur are 10 times better than any foreign entrepreneur because they have hunger in the and the fire in the belly outside people are complacent they are like they were you know they are not they're hungry they're not that productive our people are and our young age 20 every age 29 years so then the strong prime minister he has created a great image of india abroad in india all point out to one thing growth 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 so when growth happens and is happening india will be increasing but what effect it will have on urbanization is mind boggling if we do not change our thinking at this time it will be you will find continuous traffic jams continuous problems and then what will happen is people will start living when you want to meet in a point of 1 hour you will be pressed on the road for 3 hours because you need a different order. like in a way what the, what prime minister has done very smartly look at how they opened the hinterland of india express highway see the quality of the highway the num- the amount of highways they have come up he has opened up the hinterland by a network of expressway like of which I mean, what will happen after that is take it from me the same government or any other government they will bring along with the highway industrialization and residential area as a part of process development which has happened all over the world so india will see a new thing the same way if attention of honorable prime minister gets on to that rural is okay or this but unless the urban infrastructure is commensurate and ahead 
of the requirement of growth. Because you're not behind, ahead, you'll have balanced development. So I am only appealing and saying with my experience, please, please rise up because this, this, uh, this forecast of Prime Minister of will happen. But I doubt that if we continue the same way, urbanization will be there. Probably. And the quality of life. No, everybody quality of life. Urbanization means quality of life also. No? Quality of life, time, productive time. You go to office, three, three, three hours you're on a road, what the hell do you do? Everything comes differently. Water supply, drainage, and with change of environment now, you, nobody can forecast where flooding is going on. So it means the whole has to be looked into. Look at the other thing. This is God thing. What is happening in North Hill? What is happening? This structure is changing. All because of environment, climate. So subject of, of, of urbanization is a very vast subject. It, it embodies everything, frankly. And we have uh, today a very um, also dynamic um, uh, minister, Hardeep Singh Puri, because here, for example, you also, I was also used to see that when they started this Central Vista project, oh my God, the amount of papers, media bashing, even the Supreme Court, fortunately, for them. could anybody believe that they will deliver on time? and delivered in a manner. Recently, I, was, I just went around, I wanted to see it. So my driver, driver passed through. So he could not see because the trees in front are such. And they have done so smartly that one has to really come back to see. And when you enter, it is not. Now, if they were irresponsible plan, wherever they were done a high rise there. No, it is very beautifully planned. And, but the good thing is, he has done it on time. So if the, something gets in the head and becomes a priority to our honorable prime minister, we are blessed with one thing, things will happen. Absolutely. I want to ask you two more questions. This government and this prime minister's pet project is the Smart City Mission. How do you accelerate the smart city mission? You've already, in some way, given ideas and tips for it. What else can be done? You see, I beg to disagree slightly in this way. Smart city is nothing else but putting a bandage or making you, whatever it was, a little improvement. But basics remain. Basics cannot be changed. So what? They have tried to, do, to use the word, uh, local word, smart. There's nothing smart about it. The idea is to make some changes to make it better. But do you realize the implication? What will happen in our five and ten years' time? The same smart things will go away. The fundamental mistake had happened. So I would say that a step, uh, what they're doing in smart city, is a step in the right direction. but. It's not good enough. It is, it is one small thing, but it is not a permanent thing. Perm permanent thing, whatever has happened in India urbanization, as I said earlier, is very difficult to change because those wrong slums and all these have come around. They're trying to do, but it's a colossal job. But at least for future. Start thinking big and start executing big. Ex thinking big, make a paradigm shift in your mindset make completely different things so that the newer generation with the growth will happen and migration of people coming, have a better life, uh, uh, this thing than it was past. So it will be like having two India. India of the past, you live and you can smarten up a couple of things, but important thing, India of future. Absolutely. Mr. K.P. Singh, you've seen many governments, you've seen many eras of thinking, if I can call it. What do you think, apart from what you've told us on urbanization, what are the three big things you see happening with India right now, which are the steps in the right direction or trends, which tell you where India is headed? No, I would say, frankly, uh, see, a, 
the Prime Minister's step he has taken to digitalize India is something people don't realize. If you compare in the world, very few countries can stand up to India. So from no, no situation to now almost digitalizing everything is a fantastic achievement. UPI, ONDC. So, so all these are... I mean, the, these the are... The Bharat Mission. Yes, and, and bank account for everyone. Direct, 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 DBT. Uh, yes. And the amount of uh, rural infrastructure being done, I mean, we don't see the effect here, but you see the effect in the villages. The effect is being not perceived, being seen. So that's a great job, in my view. And uh, this also, in my view, uh, the policies uh, of the government, the only area is this, in my view. Say, if I was the Prime Minister, you can ask me what I would have done. With the ability of Prime Minister Modi to become a world leader, today he is a recognized world leader. Not one of the, I would say frankly, if real one to one, he is one of the top world leaders. So therefore, he has already commanded, not commanded, but he has earned the respect of all the countries. See the outside, Burnley, outside India today. When you meet people, Indian, oh, earlier India, I see. So we feel that there's a tremendous change in the outlook of people outside. Now, coming to that, also there is a fact that, that industries which are based in China, for a variety of reasons, political and otherwise, they are wanting to shift. So where they are going toward, they are going toward to Vietnam today, Vietnam mostly. So one has to examine why are they going to Vietnam? But it's a small place. Only they are going to one. Single, single window clearance and price competitiveness. And also ease of doing business. Single window. So ease of, but as a competitive uh, taxation, so imagine, but it's a narrow area. Vietnam is a narrow area, small. And the language barriers. Look at India, English speaking, 39, so 29 years young age, youngest age, and of course, the better than the best entrepreneurs. So, and now they put the highway, they have done it. They all, this is already done, it's not planned. The number of highways, look at UP, what is happening around, number of highways which are gone. So what is the next step? So I say, if I the Prime Minister, or if I was the, even Chief Minister of, of Uttar Pradesh, what I would have done? I would have, I would have utilized this thing, that how can I make my policy to attract shifting of those industries from China to India here? Because the excellent road system, image of the country, strong prime minister. So people will, as long as you make it very ease of business, so you have to find out what is Vietnam doing. You have to do better than them. Better. Ease of business. Secondly, taxation-wise also. Heaven would not fall on the earth. Give them 10 years taxation-free. Because what they will do with the moment, but yes, is restricted to Whoever sets up the industry shifts within a period of, let's say, limited time of three years, whatever time. Give them what facilities from the time there. When they set up, look at the quantum of employment generation, quantum of economic activity. Look at the GST collection. So it'll be a different thing. And my feeling is people will forget going to Vietnam, forget going to another place. India is a country they will come to. So as I said, if I was the person, I will now direct my energy to get FDI in a larger, larger manner because you have created the already infrastructure outside. But for that, it presupposes your urban infrastructure must undergo a sea change because people will live. Now, why do you want to people live in Gurgaon, in our city? 
Because look at the quality of housing. Look at the quality of environment. So like for like, people like to live there. So India for tomorrow, people coming from outside would like better spaces, top class spaces. This government can do it. And I think this is the message which you, because it is, it is only on, is available to you. You have to beat Vietnam and other countries to attract people. Absolutely, this urban debate is very important for the growth of this country to meet the targets that we've set for ourselves. My last question, Mr. K.P. Singh, you achieved everything. You given back to the country. You've been able to implement your vision. Are you still hungry? Is there a bucket list you have that you still want to tick? Yes, I'm hungry in one way slightly because I do realize, that's why I make, made a, a charitable foundation, my name is called KP Singh Foundation. We have a company, they do CSR and everything. But when I look back, while well, I've done everything for the country and for my family and for myself, but perhaps I've not done adequately for the forgotten section of society. So that awakening with me, that's why I've made the foundation and I intend to leave substantial part of my wealth to that foundation so that and organizing right now in the process of organizing professionals completely so that it can do whatever we do will be like a dent in the ocean because India is so big you would have everything but as a responsible people everybody should try to do something so we're trying to to select what activity of philanthropy we should be doing. So that, but I'm sure within a few months we'll come to conclusion, then we'll do. So that is my mission at this moment. And again, you've seen many seasons. If there's a word that describes you and I was preparing, that is resilience. You survived a copter crash, you survived personal tragedy, you survived all, all kinds of odds in the last many decades to build what you built, which is an institution which has contributed to the lives of the people. How do you think people can develop resilience? Entrepreneurs, individuals, leaders? Well, first the basic outlook has to be positive. Somebody, most of the people have, like end of the world has come, they're depressed. No, 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 no. I, for example, have an inherent thing with me. I myself don't know how, I have no clues. But I cannot see the negative side of anything. Even a dark cloud, I see the silver lighting. Some people say, like for example, when I started Gurgaon, you can imagine, when I, you know, at that time when I started Gurgaon, DLF had no money, zero, because DLF was out of business for 20 years. Then banks were forbidden to, to loan, loan to, uh, uh, to develop. Then the real estate laws well, no, no, stack no, 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 no. The business of urban development was not permitted by law, by private sector. The archaic law. So when you find everything, and then you sign, oh my God, when you, how do you buy the land in heterogeneous people? Because say if you had one family owning 200 acres, maybe easier. But here you are owning. Five, ten acres. Because, so to get them together, so it was the most difficult, the, it's easy to set up an industry, very easy. Like we, the, it is the most difficult job to set a township. That's why the, no township has been set up after independence. And in my future, no si new uh, township by private sector, the way we have done, will ever come in, in future. It's a very difficult. So somebody told me, Shori sahab started telling me when I was going on through this thing. Kya bhai jo kya bhi ye business hai is like kafan se bandhna industry nahi hai. Ye jo itni kyunki itne complicated laws hain. Aur our problem is we are compliant people. I have never never broken a law. Do you believe this thing? And the same philosophy goes to my son everywhere. See? By nature. DLF has been highly compliant people. So if you do compliance in the backdrop of these problems, it becomes very difficult. So the issue was, what 
लेकिन एक था ब्रांड था डेल का नाम एंड ब्रांड नेम वॉज गुड वर्क डन बाय चौधरी साहब इमीजिएटली आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस दैट वॉज दे वैल्यूड ब्रांड सो इवन टूडे डी एल एफ ब्रांड हैज़ बीन एनहांस वैल्यू थ्रू आउट द जनरेशन एंड टूडे वुड यू बिलीव द फोर्थ जनरेशन द बिजनेस ऑफ दिस सेवेंटी सिक्स ईयर्स ओल्ड कंपनी सो आई आई फील सेटिस्फाइड है तो मुश्किल बहुत काम लेकिन अब मेरे ख्याल से गवर्नमेंट क्या करेगी करना चाहिए दे शुड एक्वायर लैंड लाइक रिपीट ग्रेटर नोडा नोडा सिंह बिग वे इन वाइट पीपल टू डेवलप दिस हाउ दे डी एल एफ विल बी फोर रनर इन दिस वन बट खुद नहीं ले सकते जमीन वो पॉसिबल नहीं है शुक्रिया थैंक यू मिस्टर के पी सिंह फॉर टॉकिंग टू बी डब्ल्यू बिजनेस वर्ल्ड आई एम श्योर योर जर्नी एंड योर इम्पैक्ट can be replicated through the ideas that you've given today to be able to implement the vision of the prime minister and develop the new india and the new cities which are needed for the growth of india and shifting the pressure from current urban centers to developing newer large scale centers for urban dwelling thank you for talking to us kp has accomplished the impossible by transforming barren land into a world class city today gurgaon is a bustling metropolis where people from diverse cultures and communities from across the world live and work the city is headquarters for several fortune 500 mnc's and large indian corporates it provides employment to over 2 million people while gurgaon is presently only developed 50% Its full potential is left to your imagination. Unstoppable at 93 plus. The legacy continues with his son Rajiv and the fourth generation of the Singh family. Now devoting his time to philanthropic activities through the KP Singh Charitable Foundation to make it a meaningful organization. He continues to care for India.